go anywhere. I'd rather be tonight than right here. Because this is the place where I get my needs met. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. You, you, you know, you see your members doing all kind of things. The other day we seen one of our members riding children and going down through the woods. And a four-wheeler. It wouldn't look so bad if it had been a man, but this was a woman and she was like this. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you who she is, but she lived right down the road. <laughs> and her husband works at Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> so if you can guess that, you'll know who we need. The Lord's been good to us. Amen. You know, I'm so thankful that we have a church that we can call our family. If we need one another, we can call. Yes. The one call now is one of the greatest things that I have ever done in any church that I have ever passed. Didn't know about it till we moved here and then we got to listen to the state office have one and I said, well, they can have one, we can have one. And it's one of the greatest things that we've ever had But to, to keep you informed. But you know, I'm thankful because I know when you get these calls, you pray yes. and you seek the Lord. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Yes. It's the good to know that you got a family that when you're in need, that they're there. Amen. When Sister Wallace was sick, you don't know what you meant to us. I could never tell you. But uh, I just keep on having to praise the Lord because... She's off of the three pills that they give her every day. Amen. And she's done started getting off of the others and she don't have but two more of them and she's not taking any pills at all. And she's not having any headaches at all. And I don't give anybody praise for that except the Lord Jesus Christ. And you pray for them. There's some folks here at this church that if I got a need, I can call them and I know they're going to pray. Isn't that wonderful to know? And to know that we have a church that's called the Lighthouse, whereby people can get their needs met. How many was blessed this morning by that service? Would you just lift your hands and let's praise Him? It was a wonderful service today.
prepared to preach my Christmas message. I've been praying today, and if I don't preach it, it'll be after Christmas. He's still mad. <laughs> Randy's been around church members so long, he knows how to pout just like they do. <laughs> They're right, right? You raised in a pastor's home, you learn how to do a lot of things <laughs> like they do. <clears throat> I want to preach to you tonight on I have good news for you this Christmas. I have good news for you this Christmas. Isaiah 9 and 2, the Bible said the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. And they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them has the light shine. Brother Alfred, would you pray for me tonight? Yes, Lord. What's the best news that you've ever received or thought about? It was a time in your life when you really needed some good news. Can you think about that a minute? What's the greatest news? Hearing good news can make your day and sometimes it's the right news that can even make your entire life. Some of the best news you ever receive may be when you ask your wife to marry you. Come on, man, you don't have to look so sad. You ask her. Good news was when, or maybe it was when your baby was born. Don't you wish them young ones could stay little? I told Sister Hollis the other day with little J.D., I said, you know, I wish he'd just stay little, you know, like he is. He won't give us no trouble if he stay little. But the Christmas story hinges on the words, I have some good news. The shepherd in the story belonged to a nation that was waiting on the news. They were waiting for news that a promise that the Savior had come and delivered them from oppression and darkness. They had been waiting for a long time. Waiting and hoping for some good news in the world was more often than full of bad news. It was a world that was so unlikely, the one who lived in, or we live in today. Scan through the headlines of this past week and you'll read news that is terrifying and disappointing. You will find news of violence and hopelessness that seem senseless and even out of control. You will find a lot of news, but you won't find too much good news in the news today. But today I want you to know that there is good news. And it's the sort of good news that's more that will make your day. It's good news to let you know that this will change your life and make you a brand new creature in the Lord. See, a long time ago, God made a promise that one day in the midst of the darkness, good news would come. That the darkness was only temporary, like fog, and it wouldn't last for very long. And then Isaiah 9 and 2 and 6 said, The people walking in darkness has seen a great light of those living in the land of deep darkness, a light that has dawned. For unto us a child is born to give a son is given. 
that child, that son, would be the light of the world. And the birth of that child would be the birth of good news for everybody around the world. Christmas is a celebration that God's promise was fulfilled. And that news came in the bundle of shepherds who were literally sitting. The Bible said they were literally sitting in darkness. Keeping watch and waited when suddenly an angel appeared. And announced what? I got good news. Glory to God. Somebody praise the Lord, would you? I got good news. The angels were declaring that God's at work right now, right here in the midst. The one you've been waiting for, the one you've hoped for and longed for, he has come today, Amen. tonight. The good news is for everyone, every person who has ever waited, anyone who has ever hoped, everyone who has ever ever long for good news. Maybe that's you today. Your week this week may have been filled with uncertainties. Maybe filled with pain. and Maybe you've tried to recover but you just couldn't. Whatever the case is, whatever the situation you need to know that this good news is for everybody and it includes me. Everybody. All of us love to hear some good news. We are surrounded by bad news all the time. That's all we hear. And because of sometimes another all of us know what it's like to be waiting in the darkness. The fact that Christians come in the middle of the winter when the days are short. It always happens that way. When there's no more darkness and then the light makes sense to me because something in the contrast of the night that we can best see God at work in our lives when it's dark and when we're all alone by ourselves. Maybe this Christmas Eve some of you are waiting on some good news. Maybe you even waiting in the darkness or living with fear that the news won't be good. I know this past year for some of you been waiting in the hospital rooms in the doctor's office and waiting for results to come back and to see. I've been there myself. I know how that feels. But I want you to know you're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. I may have went in the room by myself, but I had somebody with me, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. I knew he was going to be there because I took him with me. As I went in. Amen. Some of you have been waiting for a lost son or a daughter to give their life to God. Some of you are waiting for peace. Peace in this world and peace in your homes that you don't have anymore. This morning, somebody walked out that door and they did not give. I seen people <laughs> sitting back weeping. Couldn't dry the tears, but they weren't willing to give God what He wanted them to do. Maybe God is placed in your waiting room. Maybe God's sitting waiting on you. You have prayed and you prayed and nothing seems to change. You read your Bible and you come to church and it seems as though your life has been limped and you're all by yourself and you feel as though you're stuck in God's waiting room. Do you know that man by the name of Noah, he had wait for 120 years from the time that he started building the ark to the time that it started raining. Think about how Abraham had to wait 99 years from the time he was born to the time that God said he would have a son which would heir to the nation of Israel. Moses 
waited 40 years in the desert before he could get into Egypt. When we delivered the Hebrew people from slavery, they had to wait in the desert for 40 years before they could get to the promised land. Waiting is not uncommon to God. Amen. The Old Testament, Joseph waited years in prison before he was made ruler. Amen. David was anointed by Samuel. And he had to wait before he became the king of Israel. Jesus had to wait 30 years in a carpenter shop before he began his public ministry. None of us like to wait. There's times when God's placed us in a waiting room so that we can learn to wait and be patient upon the Lord. I've got good news for you this Christmas. What is patience? I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but how many's got patience? If you have to wait. Mm. I can see by the look on some of you faces. He's not a patient. You want me to hurry up and tell you what Patience is accepting a difficult situation without giving God a deadline to remove it. Now you think about that. I had to work for this. Patience is accepting a, different, a difficult situation without giving God a deadline. In other words, without saying... God, you got to do this now. Without giving God a deadline to remove it. The easiest way is not always the best way. But I want to tell you something. God's not going to do anything for you. He's not going to do anything for me unless He can get the glory out of it. And that's the way it is. Times we have to Suck it up. Oh, preacher, you could have said a better word than that. You couldn't, but you wouldn't have understood it. <laughs> Suck it up. And press on through difficulties. Sometimes we're pleased in what God's waiting room so we can learn to accept life's hard knock without falling apart. You've had in those days where you just seemed like you couldn't couldn't get it going. And everything you touched, looked at, or smelled, it was bad. Somebody say something to you at work. And it's a smart remark. They didn't mean it that way, but that's the way it come out. You're having a bad day and you're biting your tongue to try to not say anything about it. You can go around screaming and the sky is falling. Or you can face circumstances with confidence that everything you're going to go through is going to work out because you're going to trust God. You know, there's a difference. When you can stand up in the morning and say, hey, things may not go good today, but I'm going to trust the Lord. And regardless of what comes my way, I'm still going to believe that I'm serving. Do you believe that tonight? I'm serving a God that's going to make everything all right. Every person has problems. He or she would rather not deal with. There's a lot of things being a preacher that I don't deal with. I remember one time I pastored a church where the choir director was winking at the music director's wife in the choir. But come to find out they were going together. I moved. Somebody asked me, Brother John said, did the Lord move you? No. But everybody in that church was connected on one side or the other. And I didn't want to deal with it. And I left. Was that right? No. Would you go back? No. You glad you done it? If you had to do it again, would you do it? Yes. I didn't want to deal with it. There's things we don't want to deal with. 
Life is not where we can pick up and close it where we want to. It's like a school cafeteria where you can eat what's on your plate and don't worry about it. You can fall apart or fall on your knees. When you surrender your situations to God, He will give you the grace to handle them no matter what you go going through, no matter what the doctor said. He don't know everything. He don't have the last word. But my Heavenly Father, thank Jesus Christ, paid the price. He's got the last word. This Christmas we're waiting and hoping so many things. I know we think that only children has a Christmas list. But husbands, we know different, don't we? We know different. My wife doesn't give me a list. But boy, she hints around a lot. Is that the way yours is? She hints around and I don't know what exactly you're waiting for, but God knows. And I know that no matter how you're waiting, it can be good news. All the time it's not bad news. Because the Savior has been born to you and to me, a Savior who has promised to bring me healing, comfort, a Savior to walk beside you no matter where you go. And I want to add, no matter what you're going through, it doesn't matter. And the government is on your shoulder and is able to meet every need that you can face if you let it. But in Isaiah 9, 6 and 7, he said, For unto us is born, a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government who will be on his shoulders, and he will be called wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. It doesn't matter what you're waiting on. Doesn't matter where you're going, but it does matter who you're serving. Amen. Because He cares for you and He loves you. And He's standing with outstretched hands. Oh, this morning, just give me a shot in the arm. Some of you go get shots. And I used to take those B12s when I was on a diet and they'd give me B12 shots, you know. They never done nothing for me. Somebody said, oh, they tied me up. They better give me two. It didn't help me at all. <laughs> when I get hyped up, Brother Keith, it's when I think about my Savior Amen. called Jesus Christ. Yes. I don't know about you today. I don't get excited about the coming of Santa Claus too much. But I get excited about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I get excited about that. And you know whether we want to believe it or whether we don't. If there wasn't any Jesus, there wouldn't be a Christmas. Because He's the reason for the season and there's no other way except for you and I through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. The greatest gift that you could ever give yourself. You ever, anybody ever Somebody don't buy you what you want, you just go out and buy it yourself and you say, I, I do that too, man. I just go out and buy me a gift. Randy's pitiful, y'all. He don't never get what he wants. Probably because he's pouting most of the time. Oh, praise the Lord. I believe I should preach on that. I got more amen than I heard. I got more God's good to us. He blesses us every day. You know, if I don't get anything this year, I'm going to be mad. No, I'm not. <laughs> if I don't get anything this year, I'm blessed. Amen. 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 I'm blessed. Do you know what I ask the Lord for? Brother Charles, brother, 
TMIS, God said, Lord, I don't care if I don't get a thing. Let my family be healthy. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Do you feel that way? Why don't you just raise your hand and glorify God? Just let my family be healthy. Let my children be healthy. I've got enough to praise the Lord right here because what God done for her is Christmas enough. He gave me a present and it was her healing. And I can't thank Him enough because I know without Him, I'm nothing. Last time she went to the doctor, I remember the doctor looking at us and said, I'm at my wit's end. I don't know what else to do. It's just like the Lord said, I'll take care of it. <laughs> I'll take care of it. Some of you that are here today, if you don't have God in your life and God don't perform miracles for you, you won't be here next Christmas, but glory be unto His name. He is that kind of God that will touch you and help you. I got good news this Christmas. He's still God. Hallelujah. He's still God. And regardless of what you say, and I said, Lord, my family can be well. My little children, my little grandchildren, they can be well. That's enough for Christmas for me. You know, the other night I did this and music you come in and close. Last night was our annual supper for the church. I know a lot of you forgot it. I ain't fussing at you. But I know you forgot it or you'd be here. I had that much faith in you. But Sister Wallace made a big old squash casserole. Anybody like squash casserole? Man, she makes some. I won't say to die for her because I don't want nobody to be dying for something. But she made some just melts in your mouth. And she made homemade corn and put that thickening in it, you know, like the ladies used to do, not for you. Open that can and, you know, down there. And it's the real thing. She gave it to me last night. And Jamie and Ashley was there. And Jamie was trying to tell his mama his souffle was better than hers. <laughs> We all know that ain't true. <laughs> and he was cooking his, and I grabbed the plate and uh, the squash casserole in the corn, and I started out the door at the back door. You know, we got three steps back there, and I didn't turn the light on, and I hit the first step, and the second one I missed. And I fell face down on that concrete pad. Needless to say, the squash casserole was gone. Corn was almost gone, about half of it was spilled. And I was laid out there, spraddled out. It ain't funny. Here comes Jamie running down the step. Jamie gets emotional. <laughs> get out there, get out. There. I said, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm all right. The only thing was hurt was my pride. <laughs> my knees swelled up. I'm stoved up. Didn't think I hurt the other knee, but I can't already move it. <laughs> I'm stoved up. I can't hardly move. But I'm blessed. I had something running down my arm. I thought, Brother Keith, I'd cut it. They cut on the light and I looked and it was corn juice. I said, thank the Lord. I ain't bleeding. But this morning, my knee swelled. My other knee swelled. And my got a blue place on my arm and walking up them steps ain't easy. 
she know what? We pinked it up, brought it on out there for you to eat. <laughs> did say Jamie's was better last night because hers wasn't her. <laughs> she told me when she got on, she said, I lied. I said, what? She said, I told Jamie his was better, but I told him the reason it was better because mine wasn't her. <laughs> you know, Christmas don't come but once a year. But I said that to say this. I got up and I thanked the Lord. You say, why in the world would you thank the Lord for Father? Because I didn't get hurt. It could have been a lot worse. That corn juice could have been blood. As I busted her plate all pieces. God's good to me. I got up. Got a little bit off of my shirt. Come right on. You know what a lot of people would have done? They went back in the house. They'd have fell on the couch. And they'd have been there for six months. <laughs> but we got we got work to be done. Christmas doesn't come but once a year. One time a year. <coughs> and remember with all that's going on in your life, because this is a busy time. We want to make sure little Johnny and Sister Susie and Aunt Mary and uh, Colonel, uh, cousin John is getting everything they want. That's not the meaning of Christmas. It's not about giving. It's about a man by the name of Jesus. That came into the world. That you could have life and have it more abundantly. I love you. I thank the Lord for this whole church. I wonder, would it be possible that we all could come to the front tonight for just a minute? You can stand up. Brother John, Brother Tim, come on up here with me. I want you to all come and let's gather right here in the front of this church. We're going to pray and we're going to ask God to bless our church. Come on, if you can come, you can sit on the front row. I'm going to ask Brother Charles to pray the prayer, and Brother Taylor's going to give the benediction. Get real close. You don't have to be scared of one another. Hold hands. A family that prays together stays together. Come on. Come on up here to the front. Sister Lolly, some of y'all come on up here to the front. Step on up where they can get in behind you. Come on in here. Take somebody by the hand right now. All over this congregation. But Charles, I want you to pray that the Lord will keep us safe. The Lord will give us a better year than He ever gave us before. Heavenly Father, First, we just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being one that is aware of every need that we have before we have it. And Lord, we thank you because you're greater than that need. You watched over us. You protected us. You gave us strength when we were weak. You gave us joy to replace sadness. Father, as we look back to what a mighty God we serve, we just take time to say thank you. Thank you for that greatest gift that has ever been given or ever will be given. That's your son. Thank you for the reason that it was given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Father, as you loved him, he displayed that love in his life. He went about doing good. And then he gave us this commandment. As I have loved you, so you love one another. Thank you for the love that is in this family and in this church. Thank you for our pastor, his wife. Thank you for these musicians that play, the singers that sing. Lord, thank you for those like me that just come and receive a blessing through the Word of God, through the music of God. Let us not forget to give you praise. Let us not forget that you're the one that gave the greatest gift. And that gift is still given through your love. In Jesus' name we ask. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we leave the house of God today, Father, we thank you for everything you've done in our hearts today, everything you've done in our lives throughout this day. Father, as we head out to this week, Father, I pray that you help each one of us to guide our hearts and to guide our lives, Father. Help us to be what you would have us to be. Help us, Lord God, to walk according to your purpose this week, Father. And let our lives shine to a world that's lost and dying. Father God, direct our path. Father, we just praise you and honor you in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen.